What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video here at Rhino Ranch. Today we've got a few things planned. Well, we've got a few things planned over the next couple of days. One of which is the big old water tower you see behind me, which in my mind is kind of an eyesore. It's a big galvanized tank, essentially in our front yard. It's just not visually appealing to me. You know, when you move to this part of town, um, everybody kind of has similar tanks similar dirt similar brown tones on everything so we're going to be changing a lot of that stuff out here at rhino ranch and the water tower is one of the first big changes we're going to be making so i went ahead and washed that this morning i'm waiting for it to dry over here in the single cab uh we've got a little mini fridge that we're going to be putting up in the guest house garage this is going to house all the produce and stuff uh for the animals eventually it might get moved up to the animal stalls out there once we get all of our electrical and our outlets put in we've got a ton and i mean ton of cans of spray primer that we're gonna be using on the water tank to get it prepped for the artwork that's gonna be going on it. But before we do that, I am excited to finally be able to do what I'm about to do here. And this might sound crazy to some of y'all, but I am so stoked to give this lawn right here its first mow by me. Now I know some of you noticed it was mowed before. That was not by me um, in one of my videos and it's a long story as to how that got mowed and yada, yada, yada. Anyways, I have not had a chance to mow this lawn back and you can see it is a very beautiful, healthy, lush lawn. It's actually one of the main reasons I bought this property is because again, everything out here is brown and gray. You don't see a lot of houses that have a nice, big, beautiful green grass area. So I was beyond stoked to see this. Now I have my own lawn equipment. Um, it's up in the guest house garage. The previous owner was nice enough to leave his lawn equipment and being that his is a lot closer, we're gonna end up uh, using his stuff right here. Let's see if we can get it fired up. Now at my old house for probably the first five or six years I was there, um, I mowed my lawn, I mowed all my neighbor's lawns. They were all either nurses or in the military. So a lot of them didn't have time at home. So I would take care of everybody's lawn in the neighborhood. And then as I got busier, I just didn't have time and ended up hiring a gardener. And dollar for dollar wise, it made a lot more sense to have a gardener um, versus me doing it myself. Kind of excited to actually get back out here and uh, mow a lawn. <laughs> Now I'm more of a bagger than a mulcher here. And this grass is a little bit wetter than I would like it to be for mowing, but we're trying to kill some time. Well, the yard is done looking really, really good. Like I said, guys, I love this grass. I'm probably gonna end up trimming it a little bit shorter and I think it'll actually end up striping better. Right now, it's pretty freaking long, but we'll slowly, gradually ease into a little bit shorter of a cut on this thing. Did you guys ever think you'd sit here and watch a YouTube video of a guy mowing his lawn? I never thought that stuff either, but those are the videos that I'm like captivated to on YouTube and stuff like that. I think it turned out pretty good. Not bad for not mowing a lawn for I don't know, six years or something like that. And it's funny because my first ever like entrepreneurial job that I ever did was mowing lawns for neighbors when I had to have been seven or eight years old. Like, no joke, that young. Parents nowadays would probably go to jail for letting their kid take a lawnmower. We actually had a self-propelled lawnmower that I would throw the weed whacker on top of and use the self-propelled feature to go about three blocks away from my parents' house because I couldn't carry all the stuff over there. Thank God I had parents that raised me to be useful, not useless. Next up on the agenda, we need to get the mini fridge up to the guest house. We gotta move all the pterodactyls over here. We got some not very happy pterodactyls. You guys will be happy because we're gonna be storing lettuce in there. You guys like lettuce. We'll give you ice cold lettuce out of the fridge. Well, we made it without dropping the fridge, so that's a good sign here. Let's plug her in. Oh, I hear some buzzing. Oh, we even got a light. Dang, I don't know how cold we need it. We don't need it super cold. Really all that's gonna be in here is lettuce for the animals, maybe a couple of cold drinks. And you all know me by now, you know that this plastic is gonna stay on the front of this fridge. Now onto the task that I've honestly been dreading, and that is getting that tank primed for Noah. Reason I've been dreading it is it's a lot of spray paint. I don't know if I got enough spray paint, and it's also kind of windy out here. So I have a feeling the spray paint that I want to stay on the tank is just gonna blow around elsewhere. Better start shaking cans now. 
Now this tank is galvanized, so does it really need to be primered? Probably not, but I want to have a nice clean base for Noah to start on. Also, is it a good idea to paint a tank? Don't know. Rhino. Ranch. All right, done. Thank God Noah is a much better artist than I am. What's your mama's name? I ride it on the water tower. Now I was hoping for a lot more even coverage, but unfortunately with the way the wind is blowing, I mean, I'm getting more paint not on the tank than I am on the tank. So it's gonna be a little bit of tiger stripes in here, but I think Noah's gonna be just fine. He's gonna color blast the crap out of this thing. So I think we got him a pretty decent base. We'll let the tank cure up for the rest of the day and overnight, and we're gonna see Noah in the morning. Now I didn't get another toy that I haven't debuted on the channel yet. Well, toy, tool, to me, tools or toys. It's in this box right here. My local Home Depot doesn't stock these, so we had to order this one. But I've heard very good things from my buddy Mark Cola. And that is the Milwaukee Switch Tank 4 Gallon Backpack Sprayer. If you follow the channel for any bit of time, you guys know I'm a sucker for any new tool Milwaukee puts out. And this backpack sprayer um, is ideal for the ranch out here. Main reason being, if you're doing a ton of spraying, you no longer have to have the old backpack pump handle. The this bad boy is all electric, runs off the 18 volt Milwaukee batteries. I'm gonna get this big old buckle right here. And once you pop both those buckles, you actually pull off the tank. And the cool thing about these is there's actually a pump built into the tank and the sprayer and the hose comes off the tank. What that means is you no longer have to worry about cross-contaminating anything because these, they sell separately for about 110 bucks. Don't quote me on that one. And you can run different types of chemicals, sealants, whatever it may be, and you don't ever have to worry about any type of cross-contamination because the entire pump, sprayer, nozzle, everything is one self-contained unit. And then you have the actual backpack rig itself with, I'm assuming, the battery door there. Well, very little assembly out of the box. All we had to do was just put the little metal piece on the wand there. I'm gonna fill it up with water right now just to give it a little test before we actually put some chemicals in it. And I just noticed up underneath the lid, they give you this little removable measuring cup here. Turn it on on the side right here, a nice big switch that you can get to without having to look. And then it's got a adjustment knob here for the flow. <clears throat> Let's give it a little test spray. I'm assuming it's building pressure. Very quiet. All right, screw it. We're cranking it to five. We don't have patience. Oh, jeez. All right, I think clearly I've done something wrong here. I hate to say it, guys, but this might be the first time a Milwaukee product has not only let me down, has not worked right out of the package. Um, I've pulled the whole thing apart. There's water in this little pump housing, which means something in here is leaking and not letting it build pressure. Um, there should not be any water up in this section right here, so. I can't find the leak. I don't know if I really want to deal with finding the leak. I think I'm just going to put it back together, return it, and get a new one. Here's to tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have a better day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And we're back. Day two. Ooh, a little bit bright out here today. Super, super cold this morning and wet and damp. And there was a thick marine layer. I think it's called marine layer when we're in the mountains still. I don't really know. Oh, we got the artist himself. Noah, what up, bro? Dang, dude. Look at this thing. Yeah, I decided to get some of those good old fuel economy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Gone a long time. I know, I know. Everybody, you may or may not remember Noah. I know there's a lot of new people to the channel. Noah's the one that did the killer artwork over at our warehouse and is about to have fun. Don't mind my priming job, all right? Uh, we won't see it at the end, so. All right, good. Jeez. Oh, hey, man, I got a golf cart. We could, like, throw all this in. You know, that probably be Yeah. Look at that. We got all 94 paint. Yup. The best of the best. Yeah, Montana, if you're seeing this, uh oh, I love you. <laughs> well, we got the the paint rig all loaded down here. You ready? Should we just go like tag up the whole neighborhood? Um, yeah. Which side do you want to start with? Yeah, you get shot for that around here, Noah. <laughs> Noah, Walter, Walter, Noah. Uh, How's it going, bud? Yeah, you guys get well acquainted. Dang, bro, he's eyeing that Red Bull. 
Walter, you're a white bull. So I'm gonna apologize for the sun, but Noah's starting to get his lines all sketched out here. And when he's got a second, we'll show you guys kind of, you, you got a second, Noah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show him the, uh, the kind of the sketch, sketch. yeah. Right so there's kind of the sketch that we're gonna be working with. I think it's gonna look super sick, super clean. Noah doesn't just do side of the road graffiti in legal spot. He does murals too, right? Yep. Oh, murals, supercars. Noah's been blown up, guys. Make sure you check him out. Just two turntables and a microphone. The vibe lit, go ahead and let your lighters flow. This is it, whether you drink or like the smoke, whether you don't do it at all. One thing I noticed while Noah's painting over here, and this is an issue that kind of worries me, is the top of the tank is kind of dirty from these trees that drop stuff on it. So you can see just from the condensation this morning and last night, all this brown streaks that are coming down from the top. And these don't come off very easily. I'm worried they're going to end up staining his mural. So I think we're going to have to find a way to get up there today, clean the top of the tank, and hopefully remove probably some of these tree limbs here. You bob your head till your neck hurt like that is the truth. You backpack with your rap pad. No iPhone, no laptop, just your backpack. Uh, you walk hard with your walk man, waving your arms. When you ain't have your rap book, you write your verse in your palm. Hip hop is the religion, you rehearsing your songs. You rap your favorite song low so you won't curse around your mom. My first rap tape was Illmatic. The first verse I ever wrote was to Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt. The grind for hip hop is hard, I got a reason to doubt. But when I'm stressing, this even me out. Uh. Dude, this is turning out so, so sick. I'm glad to finally have color out here. I mean, obviously, now that everything's burned, we have even less color, but out in this area, like the brush and the trees and everything, like it's all the same tones and there's just not enough pop of color. And that's definitely gonna be the first step in brightening everything up. I do have a giant landscape plan for Rhino Ranch here, which I will show you guys uh, one of these days. But for those of you that come here for the animals and not me, I realize I've never given you guys an update on the pea chick that we had, the little baby peacock. And well, she, he, we think it's a he, is uh, doing great. He's outside right now, actually. Soaking up some nature, and yes, a bigger cage is coming. He grew very, very quick. What's up, buddy? You wanna say hi to the channel? Yeah? You little baby pterodactyl? Yeah, what's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Hey, hey, I know y'all love cardboard. Let's go, move it. Hey, 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 hey. You steal the paint, you steal the paint. Back up, let's go. There you go, Bubbles. Yep, you clean up all that brush in there. Okay, well, all right, we'll just poop right here too, but I guess in one hole, out the other. Noah, they uh, they almost stole your paint over here, buddy. I had to fight him off, fought off the goat gang. It's just two turntables and a microphone. And a microphone. It's just two turntables and a microphone. The vibe Call booze can leave your bruise, scandalous avenues, Ronnie Boos collude and peruse and for jewels while gang is tapping the snooze. It's a who's who. Now Noah's artwork can't be appreciated if there's a bunch of chicken wire and some fencing up around that water tank, so we're gonna see if we can remove some of those T-posts and then we're gonna figure out a better way to keep the animals from uh, stepping on the valves and all that stuff. Well Noah, I heard you liked working on uh, water towers in Fallujah or wherever it was. Malaysia. Malaysia? <laughs> a little different, yeah. Oh, all right, well, I figures, you know, if you enjoy working on water towers where it's sketchy, I'd start yanking posts around you while you're working. Oh, man, how else are you gonna do? Yeah, I, th I don't know what could go wrong. Well, I'm kind of worried about this one going, bam right through a hole in the tank. Smooshed on the tailgate there. Good lord. Oh, she, she's a little wedged in there. Yeah, that explains why they don't come out easy. We did a little more damage than we thought there, Noah. Hey, I thought it was both tough, or was that dodge? Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Anybody got a tailgate for an OBS? That's why you have a ranch truck. You don't care about it. Hold on, let's make sure the tailgate works. Oh, we're good. Good, tailgate still works, Noah. Hey, I think at this point, Noah, I'll probably get my grinder and, you know, just cut these off at ground level. So basically all we need to protect is these pipes right here so the animals don't come over and walk on it or rub up against it. 
Um, so I'm thinking just something little that's gonna come out over, over, and back in. That way nothing blocks all of Noah's artwork. And we honestly don't need to go that tall. Um, you know, the donkeys aren't gonna step over it. So really the goat height is kind of all we need to worry about. So probably end up building something about about yay high. Might actually use some of the leftover four by fours and two by fours and make it kind of mimic the uh, fencing that's going around the property, but obviously with like two uh, horizontals. I'm gonna slowly drive away from that scene with my tail tucked between my legs here. Good news is the old girl's got some power behind her though. Well, yesterday evening, the wind started picking up a little too much, so that's about as far as Noah was able to get before the wind started just blowing his paint around. So he's gonna be back in the next couple days and finish that. We're gonna head down now to the warehouse Meet up with our buddy Sergio, he needs a little help from us. And it's gonna be the perfect opportunity to test out the NOCO Boost Pro, which I just picked up, and don't mind the truck's dirty. We all know, my trucks are dirty inside. Being out at the ranch the other day, I actually killed the battery in the single cab OBS that we're in right now, and I didn't have a good jump box, so this came highly recommended from Wes. It's a 4,000 amp jump starter. I believe, I believe you can get 80 jump starts out of one charge on that thing. So we're gonna test it today. We're at the warehouse, let's go see if we can find Sergio. There's the big work for it mural that Noah did in the background there behind me, in case you guys haven't seen that on the channel or you're new to the channel. Sergio, what are we working on now, dude? Up, man? We take this thing for a spin when you're done? Yeah. This thing will look great at the ranch. Actually, you know how to turn it on? Well, you, how to move it on. You don't know how to turn it on? No, I know how to turn it on, not to move, how to move it. So before we go help Sergio, we gotta get Sergio over here to give us a some opinions you guys probably haven't seen on Dedek's flatbed here the work for it plate that we had made a long time ago but we just never had time to really fit up to it well Dedek got it fitted up but Sergio we need to backlight this thing with some LED strips or something behind it so it lights up work for it behind it it'll be cool to have it where if you do brake lights, brake lights and reverse from here That'd be cool. Cool. Yeah. you could do it and you maybe do half and half where it will do like turn left, signal turn signal too well, I actually like the look of amber better because the whole truck's kind of getting like a black and gold feel. Ooh. So amber might actually be better anyways. All right, well now we're going to put the uh, Jumpstart box, the no code to the test here. With Sergio's collection of ambulances, this is like half the collection of ambulances that they own. We got high hopes. This has been dead for how long, Sergio? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did they run before they got here? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, oh, they relocated the batteries? Or they are on these bands. They are on these bands right here. Are the batteries down there? Yeah. Well, this one has a post, so you're good. Yeah, all right, let's get it on the post. Keep it home? No, it should kick on. Yeah, it's on. It should read out the voltage on there. I don't know why it's not reading voltage. Because probably the batteries are completely dead. So if they're completely dead, I think you got to do the override. Got it. Yeah, that's the override. You need that. <laughs> for sure. All right, we're on the override. All right. Good. I don't know. Try it. Let's see what happens. Uh oh. Well, so far it's 300 bucks not well spent. <laughs> Think those batteries are drawing too much? Should we disconnect those batteries? I say hook, you got a terminal spot up here. Cut, right, we'll start over. Start over on the next ambulance. Uh, this one runs great. Rum, 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 I don't need a better ground than that. Where, where you want That's to? That's a good ground. Uh, you got a grounding strap going to that ground. Uh, is chassis? I mean, I know it charges GoPros great. Oh, uh, oh, uh, all uh, right, uh. all right. Yeah, so much for those Amazon reviews of, ah, oh, I started my 7.3 diesel with no batteries in it. All right, so, uh, so much for that, being my savior out at the ranch. I mean, it, it could be, we'll see. We're gonna get some jumper cables right now. We're gonna grab the 7.3 and see, uh, you know, see what we can do on that there ambulance. All right, we got a more expensive jump box here. All right, Sergio, give it a shot. Maybe it's not my jump box, Sergio. Did these things ever run? Yeah. Oh, okay, they ran. All right. Yeah, I'm positive. How many batteries do you have? Two? Two. Okay. All right, now we're getting desperate. <laughs> Pulling out some more Chinese. Let's Little see. booster boxes here. <laughs> this hooked up with the truck. I don't know. Yeah, that's a big negative. Hey, Sergio, I got a tow rope. The only reason we're even moving these right now is about to seal coat the parking lot. Um, so we got to get them moved out of the way, but... Yeah, those things are uh, gonna need a little bit of help to start. Well, plan Z, we're resorting to towing. <laughs> turn, turn. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we got a great idea to get this into a parking spot. We lengthened our tow rope back there. 
We're gonna get some speed. I'm gonna stop right in front of a parking spot and Danny's gonna whip it into the spot. I can foresee this going very bad. I think I completely missed that on camera, but it worked. Hey, the Jeep can get out, you're good. You're good, you're good enough. Yep, park it. Surprised that worked as well as that did. Told you, you gotta have faith. All right. The only thing is that you ran over a little bit of the... Uh, no, that's fine. All right, we gotta do that one more time. Well, we're good now. It doesn't help when there's 40 cars coming at us in the parking lot. <laughs> we're dipping and dodging. Yeah. All right, mission accomplished. We got ambulances moved. We're gonna try that jump start out on something that actually starts being that, even with the truck and the jumper cables, these ones start. So maybe there's still hope for the no cup. Break backs back was ruined the track. There's under two inches shackles. Fix something to say, rappers. Never with nothing to say, okay? To the day, yeah. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.